Greetings everyone. Have a new product to review here. Speaker system. It's the Dayton Audio Classic B65. These are pretty new. Dayton Audio seems to be the house brand of Parts Express. And for many years they had the B652 speaker, a super budget speaker. I mean, for the price it wasn't all that bad. But that speaker is no more, and this seems to be a replacement, and it looks like it might be better in practically every way. So I want to do a comparison of them, but for now let's get them out of the box and take a look. So here's what comes in the box, of course the pair of speakers. Now looking them over, I seem to have a really nice fit and finish. Again, they're going for the classic look here with the wood grain. I guess that'd be like a walnut. And this is a vinyl veneer, of course. But it doesn't look like the real cheap, shiny vinyl. It, it has a very nice um, walnut veneer look to it, I would say. In the back here, you got a hanger. Nicer quality binding posts. And looking looking at the fit and finish, it seems to be really well done. So we'll look at more into detail of these in a moment. They also give you a set of wire, a little booklet about some of their other products, owner's manual, and stick on feet for the bottom okay got them up here on the bench the old Dayton B652's and of course the new B65's well the 65 is a little bit taller it's a bit wider they are the same depth I believe And if I didn't mention, if you don't like this color, you can get them in black. But yeah, I'm kind of tired of the black on black speaker. I really like the uh, color of this one. So let me pop the grills off. So the B652 has been on the market for many years. I don't know how long they've been on the market, but I, I know I've had these probably for like 10 years. And they started out at $29, or at least that's what I got them for on sale a long time ago. But over the years, price crept up. I think their regular price was $50. Now these are $70, but as we look here, they should be better in just about every way. Hopefully they sound better. I don't know. I haven't heard them yet. Now the B652 had that classic cheap tweeter you see in every speaker. Not a bad tweeter, but you, know, you always see that in the cheap budget speakers. It had the paper cone woofer. Whereas now we're getting a 1 inch dome tweeter. And... Um, I'm not sure if this is paper or it's a poly woofer. I'll have to check that for you, but they are both sealed, so we'll have to take a look at that. Mine's got a little ding in it here. The fit and finish was good on these. Not perfect, but not bad. The 652 seemed to be very nice. both give you the hangers the old speakers had the spring terminals which I like I always like these because they're so quick just push them down but you know most people are gonna like these screw terminals and you can also plug in your banana type connectors as well the six five the B six five twos are rated five to forty watts 8 ohms, but they were really 4 ohms. 70 to 20 kilohertz. 
where the new B65s are rated 55 to 20 kilohertz, 40 watts RMS, 75 max, impedance 6 ohms. Well, look at that. A real crossover. The B652 just had a capacitor for the tweeter. So the signal would come in direct to the woofer and to the tweeter there was only a capacitor. There was not a real crossover in these. But here, looks like we have two coils and two capacitors. You know, nothing fancy, no air coils or film caps, but, you know, this is par for the course for a budget speaker. But I'm glad to actually see a real crossover here, probably second order for the woofer and the tweeter, since there's two caps and two coils. Looking at the back of the woofers here, magnet sizes are the same. Now this is saying 4 ohms as well. The drivers look quite similar from the back. I just might have used a different uh, dust cover there. Inverted design on this one. Make it a little more stylish, I guess. So I'd have to do some parameter checks to see if these woofers are indeed the same or not in uh, till and small parameters. Uh, this has some black, kind of minimal black stuffing inside here, fiber fill. And I might have stuffed these. I bet I added stuffing to these. These have a lot in them. I, I probably added stuffing. I don't think they came with that much. So, yeah, I'll just leave it the way it is and do a comparison. It's all about the sound quality of these. Um, like I say, these these weren't bad for the money. I mean, they're they're not going to compare to a more expensive speaker. These had a bass hump in the 90 to 100 hertz range. It gave them a little bit of a boxy type, not really a boomy, I would say, but kind of a boxy sound. I'm hoping that these don't have that. And uh, hoping the bass goes deeper with these. I don't know how much deeper it would go if these drivers are similar. Okay, so what I'll do now is use my digital recorder and uh, try to record these speakers. I'll switch back and forth and indicate. Never really works out the way it sounds on these things. I don't think quite represents what they sound like to me. But I'll do it anyway. Now, there's always going to be limitations when uh, recording like this. You're picking up some of the room acoustics and uh, limitations of the recorder and YouTube and all that good stuff. So go ahead and play some music. Of course, it has to be copyright free to avoid the strikes and all that stuff. my ears the piano notes sound a little thinner on these a little more full on these speakers i wish i had some vocals that weren't copyrighted some music with vocals in it but i spent probably three hours going through different types of music you know different genres and different periods of music listening to the differences between these speakers and these do have this speaker here, the B652, does have a, a colored sound in the mid to upper mid range. 
and vocals really suffer, especially male vocals. The reason being is, you know, this speaker, this the woofer driver, is fed directly from the amplifier. There's no crossover it goes through. And it's just beamed right out at you, and it, it sounds harsh. It sounds like more of a peak. Uh, I don't know, maybe the 3, 4, 5 kilohertz range. In fact, I can cover this tweeter and still hear it, where this speaker with the crossover doesn't have that issue. Vocals sound more natural. I don't have that coloration. Much, much better. Now, the bass of these speakers sound almost identical to me. It starts really picking up around 60 hertz. You get a little bit of extension down around to 50, maybe a bit below. But if you want the lowest register, you're going to need a subwoofer. But like I say, around 60 hertz, bass really picks up. And you know, I moved around the room and playing pure notes, you know, sine wave tones, and they sounded pretty even. I enlisted the help of the sound meter, and below 80 hertz, this was one dB more. In other words, essentially the same. Now around 90 and 100, where this speaker seems to have that kind of boxy sound to it because I think the bass peaks up a little bit. Well, this speaker was 1 dB lower instead of 1 dB higher. And that's because they're smoothing that away. Although I don't think they totally got rid of it. I might try stuffing this box like I did this one to see if I can tame that some more. You know, this speaker was probably worse before I stuffed it. But stuffing it more might remove another dB or two. It's not going to do much. Stuffing really doesn't do much unless you really pack it in pretty well. But it might reduce it, like I say. Now, bass with music does sound better because, again, you're not being beamed with all that upper mid-range junk. And because it's not being veiled, the bass does sound better with music with the speaker. As far as treble goes, the speakers are fairly close. I'm not hearing a huge difference. Maybe a little more smoother with this speaker. It, it's got the uh, one-inch dome. You know, this is a dome as well. But, you know, those really basic low-cost tweeters you see in a lot of speakers. But again, what I heard the most was that coloration in the mid to upper mid range of this speaker here. And it makes a huge difference. So this speaker does sound so much better. How's it going to compare to a $300 speaker? I can't say it's going to beat it. I would really have to do a side by side test. But it is a huge improvement over the B652, which it seems to be replacing. How does this sound compared to the MK402, the Dayton Audio MK402 I use as a computer speaker? I did also uh, listen to it as well. Well, I think this has a fuller mid-range, maybe a little bit much. I think some people might want to tame the mid-range down a bit with this speaker. But you know, I, I like this a little better. It's more sensitive. The MK402s, they're a pretty insensitive speaker. They're great for computer speakers because they're you know better near-field speakers. But I like the fuller mid-range of these better. Some people, like I say, hi-fi people may not like that as much. But to me, I like that more in this speaker. So my final thoughts on the B65s. Are they a worthy replacement of the B652s? Well, absolutely. Though you do pay more, I mean, they're still well under $100 for a pair. They look so much better. They sound so much better. They have a real crossover in them. I think the dome tweeter's better. It makes these worth their price. It's going to be interesting what other reviewers have to say about it. You know, some reviewers have nicer test equipment. They actually run these through tests. 
like Aaron's audio. He does a wonderful job. He's a great speaker tester, by the way. Highly recommended. I don't know if he'll test speakers such as these. Tends to seem to go with uh, more expensive stuff. If you're looking for a budget speaker to use with an amplifier, you know, one of those smaller Class D amps, when you make a small system, these are a very worthy contender. And I think I'll wrap it up here, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.